A senior advocate of Nigeria, Michael Zekome, who is lawyer to the leader of proscribed IPOB, Namde Kanu, has written to President Muhammadu Buhari, urging him to order the immediate release of Namde Kanu through what he calls a more productive political solution. In the petition to the president, Ozakome wants the president to instruct the attorney general of the federation to enter a nolle prosequi. He says this is to correct what he describes as a long-standing travesty. The senior advocate of also pointed to the July 2022 ruling of the United Nations Working Group on arbitrary detention, which the Nigerian government filed in response to the UN agency's communication. Well, for more on this issue, we're now being joined by the senior advocate of Nigeria himself, Chief Mike Ozekome, who is the lawyer to <coughs> Inam Dekano. Thank you so much, senior advocate, for joining us on the news tonight. We do appreciate your time. Uh, just to start this conversation, uh, you say you are appealing to the president to release Inam Dekano through a more productive political solution. What exactly does that mean? Yeah, what it means is that you may win the war without winning the peace. So at the end of the day, it is always better to have peace, lasting peace. Not what Chief M.K. Abiola we call peace of the graveyard or peace of the cemetery. So I wrote to the president a 38-page letter with an executive summary of three pages pleading with Mr. President to please release Nnam Kanu immediately and unconditionally because Nnam Kanu's trial, as far as the facts have shown and as far as I'm concerned as his lawyer, is nothing but a political trial. Nnam Kanu it's only a metaphor for the Igbo struggle for self-determination. And self-determination is recognized as a right by several international instruments. The United Nations Charter, Section 1, United Nations Charter of 1945, Section 1 of the International Covenant on Political and social rights of the people, Section 1 of the International Covenant on Economic, Social and Cultural Rights of the People, Section 20 of the African Charter on Human and People's Rights. All of them recognize self-determination to determine your destiny, how you want to live, as a necessary concomitant of human beings as homo sapiens. So that was how Nam in 2012 founded IPOB, a non-violent organization. We all saw the march, marching of the streets of Umuahia, Aba, Onicha, Enugu, and elsewhere, blowing whistle, marching, singing, wearing beret. They were not violent until the 14th of September. 2017 went through operation of python the nigerian army invaded the ancestral home of nam the kanu with his father in residence as a kanu using operation python in that operation about 28 unarmed and innocent nigerians were brutally mowed down in nam the kanu escaped through his teeth with the whiskers and landed first in Rome, and then Israel, where he deposed to an affidavit to show the circumstances under which he had run away from Nigeria, that he did not jump bail, which had been granted to him. Whilst on that bail in United Kingdom, as a citizen of UK, Nabi Kanu visited Kenya. And on the 26th of June, 2021, Nabi Kanu was forcibly abducted, like was done to Maru Diko, on the 9th of Ju July, 1984, he was kidnapped, forcibly abducted, blindfolded, tortured, and brutally, horrifically renditioned back to Nigeria, 
without Nigeria undergoing the due process of extradition law and going by the doctrine of specialty, which says you can only be brought back to face the trials on which you have been rendered, not existing counts right. and not the uh, existing counts on which you were being tried. So when now the Kanu was brought back, they had to again amend the 50 count charge, the eight count charge that were against him before he was brutally brought back to Nigeria to 50 counts. I went to court, argued against the counts as being not valid. The court struck out eight of the 50 counts, right. remaining seven for over which we have appealed to the Court of Appeal. I have made this appeal to Mr. President because you notice that being the metaphor for the Igbo struggles, even though it's not physically outside prison, outside the gulag of SSS where it's currently being kept under inhuman and degrading treatment, as found by the United Nations Working Group on arbitrary arrest, in his report and ruling of 20th of July this year, the Igbos of the Southeast still obey him on any day his matter is coming up by sitting at home. This grinds to a halt businesses and the normal way of life. What I have done right. is to appeal to Mr. President to, you know, to use um, extra judicial means Okay. Not by force, but by calling upon the Attorney General to use Section 174 of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, 1999 as altered, as amended, to enter a knowledge prosecute for right. okay. Nabi Kanu. What does it mean? If I to may come in. continue the present counts or charge going against him. And one of those counts, uh, Mr. Michael Zekome, is treasonable felony. Can you really have a political solution uh, to uh, treason charges? I mean, are there any precedences for that in Nigeria, uh, for example? And what really would be the implications if uh, Namdi Kano is not released, especially when you say UN group had asked uh, the, the government to release Namdi Kano? Yeah, the consequences for a country is to turn a country into a pariah nation. If United Nations Organization, the Charter of 1945, to which you are a signatory, you are a charter, you are a citizen of the world, by being recognized by the United Nations, and it has given a ruling, and you ignore it, there are usually consequences. Such a country is turned into a pariah nation. When you talk about treason, Section 15 of the Extradition Act says you can only rendition a person back. Not for counts that were already going on, but for the matter you think he has done wrong there. So the United Nations Working Group inducted the Nigerian government and the Kenyan government for brutally bringing Nandi Kanu back to Nigeria and keeping him under horrendous treatment. Treason there are no counts really bordering on treason. The nearer they have is what they call treasonable felony. But we have shown the counts for what they are. Empty, hollow, vain, vacuous. Counts that have no substance, full of sound and fury, signifying nothing. That was why we were able to strike out to get eight counts, struck out remaining seven, which we have told the Court of Appeal to also strike out. If you accuse a person, for example, of making a broadcast, you didn't state where he made the broadcast, whether it was in the spirit world or in the land of the dead or in, the go or in ghost land. And then you are saying that based on that voice, which can be simulated, that some people demonstrated in Nigeria and burnt houses, some military people were also affected. I hope the government will be able to call about 1 million Nigerians out of Nigeria's 280 million people to come and testify to show what effect they said a broadcast from an unknown destination contrary to the Federal High Court Act and contrary to decisions by the Supreme Court 
that you must take the venue of an offense at the time. They did not state. Would they be able to have up to 1 million Nigerians to come and state? Okay, you made this broadcast. That is why some people broke ribs. The counts themselves are ludicrous and ridiculous. Mm. The nearest they would have got is that he imported the transmitter. All right, so we are looking at Obulu is Suzo. Anambra State, quit the Federal High Court in Abuja, mm -hmm. has no jurisdiction over. So I am telling President Buhari that as the president of Nigeria, he can look at the larger picture, mm. not at the smaller picture. He must see the cup as half full, and not, not half as empty. Uh, half empty. All right. He must see now the canoe uh, from uh, the, so the binoculars mm. that is being persecuted. Okay. His political persecution as found out by the United Nations Working Group on uh, Arbitrary Detention. Okay, Senior Advocate, I, I mean, you've written this to the president. I wonder if there's been any response. And i also like to ask you, because the president has been asked this question uh, only recently in an interview, and he said uh, he would not interfere with the judiciary. Kanu's case is in the court. Let the judiciary take its course. Let the, the court, case take its course is, in court. That, but I also yeah, want to ask not... you, as a senior advocate of Nigeria, is it that you do not have faith in the system, in the judiciary, for this case to run its course? To start with, the case itself is political. When I see political cases, I know them. I've practiced law for 41 years. When the president says he will not interfere with the judiciary, no one is saying he should interfere with the judiciary. I do not expect Mr. President to go before the judge and say, hello, I want you to withdraw this case. I, I've struck it out. It doesn't go that way. No, will I ever advocate for that? What I do say is that the president is the appointer of, uh, of Abubakar Malami, the attorney, a senior advocate of Nigeria, the attorney general of the federation. Have you not seen in the last seven years, many political cases, many cases involving federal government appointees that were discontinued with a nolle prosecutor. That is not interference with the judiciary. It is a right, a constitutional right given to the Attorney General of the Federation under Section 175 of the Constitution that you can undertake, you can continue, you can discontinue, you can withdraw any charge that is already going on whether initially filed by you or by any other person or authority. But the Attorney General cannot do this by himself because he's an appointee of Mr. President, because the tail cannot wag the dog, because the messenger cannot become greater than the person who sent him a message. That is why I'm saying the President as Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces of Nigeria and as the President using his executive powers under uh, Section 5 of the Constitution, does have the power to instruct the attorney general to say, look, it is more politically, socially, culturally, economically productive to have Nam the Kanu released immediately and unconditionally from detention so that there will be peace again in the restless southeast part of Nigeria. Is southeast not a part of Nigeria? Have you not seen that each day Nam the Kanu is going to court or when they believe that he's going to court? that the entire place is locked down, and that has been going on for over three, four, five years, is Mr. President, is, can he not see Southeast as part and parcel of Nigeria and discover that the best solution to this is political solution. That is not interference with the judiciary. It is by simply instructing the Attorney General of the Federation who will do what the law says he can do under Section 174 of the Constitution. I assure you, my dear sister, that is not interference with the judicial function. Rather, it is in compliance with our judicial tenets. Yeah, but there are others who would say that this might just set the wrong precedents and wrong signals to those who may want to take up arms against uh, the country in the name of uh, ethnic or regional agitations. And I'd also like you to uh, address, in the event that President Muhammad Buhari does not listen to uh, your plea, apart from the, the uh, indictment by the UN Council, what else can the UN Council do to intervene in this matter? Well, the UN has various sanctions that can be imposed on a country that willfully 
defies any of his agencies, particularly on matters having to do with human rights of the citizens. The UN in this case, through its agency, has found that Inna Vikanu was brutally tortured. That even we, his lawyers, are not giving access to him. And that we are even being dehumanized. Do you know when we visit SSS, everything, every single thing, up to pen, up to coins, up to, up to, up to uh, Naira notes, up to handkerchief, up to your shoes, have to be removed before you can see Inna Vikanu. How do I confer with my client? Without a file, without books, without papers for us to have ideas. That is not a, a fair trial. The same people who accuse him, who got him renditioned back to Nigeria forcefully, under or, or, or torturous circumstances, blindfolded, on the 26th of June 2021, are the same people who investigated him, who accused him, who are prosecuting him, and they are the people who are also his custodians keeping him. Under solitary confinement, with, with, with his health failing on a daily basis. His health failing. Now the canoe's health is failing on a daily basis. And we have begged, let an independent doctor look at him, particularly having regard to, uh, with his potassium content, the potassium content in his body. And he's draining away. And he, he's kept in solitary confinement. He can only be open on certain days of the week just to see the sun. Don't you know vitamin D that you must have the sun? Now, if the government does not do that, that means the government is saying, telling the uh, United Nations, go to hell. Although we are a part and parcel of you, we can do anything we want to do and ignore you. And there are consequences. Many of them, legal, constitutional, international, conventional, and including a country being turned into a pariah in a way that when, they, when you speak, they will say, oh, don't mind them. They are, not, they, do, they are not rule of law compliant. That is not the kind of image uh, we want. I know uh, President Buhari, I'm sure, and I urge him not to leave behind such a legacy. Didn't he just tell the hunger last week when he was here? That he wants to leave behind a legacy of adherence to rule of law and a free and fair election and electoral process. This is one such time that Mr. President is being called upon to walk the talk that you just said last week by releasing Inna Bikanu unconditionally, forthwith, immediately. And it caused the government no harm. Inna Bikanu will simply come, go back to his village. The entire Igbo people will come out jubilating. Everybody will be happy. Can't you see that the tension is too much? We can, instead of self-immolating, self-destructing, we can self-build, we can build confidence, we can stretch the hand, our hands across the Niger, across the Benue, we can incorporate everybody, we can have rapprochement, we can bring about peace, genuine peace that leads to egalitarian, egalitarianism. Peace, not peace of the graveyard or symmetry, but yeah, peace okay. that well, is built with mutual point, respect. Yeah, so that, that point has man, been. We also feel they are part and parcel of this country. That point has been well. And is the same it thing has been well made. If, for if I may just. Uh, Sunday Igboho, yes. who was also arrested, right. have written severally on it that he should also, because his, 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 his determination for Oduduwa Republic. It's not a crime known international law. And that's the, the point I'm trying to make. That's the point I'm trying to raise with you. If it were not signal to uh, non-state actors and other ethnic agitators that they can actually go ahead in the event that President Muhammad Buhari really Excuse uh, me. responds to your appeal. Excuse me. Yeah. You and I, we are living in Nigeria. You are talking about, you are talking about harmless people who, who are not armed. Are you not aware that in this country, are you not aware that in this country, some Boko Haram, some people accused of Boko Haram were released and traded for others by way of uh, a quid pro quo? They say, okay, release some of us. Then we will release some, uh, some of your detained citizens. Are you not aware that that has gone on in this country? So what, what is the bad precedent of saying a non-violent pe person should be released from detention, from illegal detention. A detention that the United Nations has been found to be illegal and to be unconstitutional. 
and to be torturous. I do not see anything that is setting any bad precedent there in a situation where, where as a matter of fact, some Boko Haram and, and armed bandits are being released in exchange for some of their members, where kidnappers are demanding from parents of children they have kidnapped to buy tarodo, tatashe, tomatoes, vegetable oil, palm oil, and, um, uba, to buy salt, to buy rice, for them, beans, yams, for them to feed their children so as to keep them alive, to enable the parents pay ransom for them. What is the long precedent here that we are just saying, release, find a political solution by going through the tenets and the provisions of the law. I do not personally see anything wrong with that at all. And there's none that I know of. And I cannot see it leading to any floodgate or any resurgence by other people coming to say, um, uh, criminals coming to say, oh, you must also give me reprieve. It, it, it does not happen that way. How many Nabdi canoes do you have in Nigeria? And how many Sunday Igbohos do you have in Nigeria? These are people who have carried the specter of their people on their heads, and they have become a metaphor for mm -hmm. their uh, self-determination uh, struggle. All right, Mr. Mike Ezokame, a senior advocate of Nigeria and lawyer to Namde Kano, the IPOB, proscribed IPOB leader. Thank you so much for joining us on News.